Retro games are classic and awesome, and I still play them to this day. But we're here to talk about something new and retro. I'm Wizwer100, you're the viewers, and I'm the reviewer, and welcome to Is It Worth It? NES Remix 1 and 2. Video games are always advancing forward with next-gen improvements and ideas from companies. Sometimes they grab an old game from the past to let people play what they might have missed, which is how I feel about NES Remix 1 and 2. These two games, as the title says, is a remix compilation of some of Nintendo's classic NES games, like Mario, Zelda, and Donkey Kong to name a few. In these games you try to complete challenges given to you within the game's world, as opposed to playing a remixed version of the games you picked. Well, if they did that, the virtual console for NES games would be pretty pointless to have now, wouldn't it? Basically, these are more like mini-games, much like the WarioWare game. When you complete the challenges, you're given a star rating based on how fast you complete the challenge, which unlocks more mini-games for you to play, a game demo for each series, and points that unlock stamps for you to use to post in the Miiverse. You get double if it's the game of the day. On that subject, there's also a helpful feature in this game where you can get help from other players by watching them beat the minigame. But only in NES Remix 2. You can also get advice from the comments they leave behind, which really helped me on some of the trickier minigames to 3 star. You can play this game on the TV or just on your gamepad, whichever one you feel comfortable with, which is really nice. The minigames for the most part are quite a lot of fun to play and beat, with classic games you know and games I've never heard of like Clue Clue Land. There is of course the unfortunate occasion, I hate the designers who made this challenge for this one minigame moments, but for the most part, the minigames and challenges are good or reasonable. You've got two types of game stages, the regular stages where you play within the games as series, while in the remix stage you play a special remix challenge minigame like playing as Link in the Donkey Kong game instead of Mario, where Link can't jump over the barrels or going through a level in the dark. NES Remix looks great, although that's not saying much being that they're using mostly old game graphics and that also goes for the music and sound. It's pretty nice, but just like the graphics, not saying much since they're mostly using old game music. Overall, I liked NES Remix. It was a fun game despite all the rough moments I might have had with it. That is until I completed every single challenge with 3 stars, and well, basically I liked the game in the beginning, but the closer I got to completing the game, it started to lose me. Basically, the game started to fall apart on me near the end. This game had potential, but it really loses it when you're done with it. There's no replay value after you 3-star all the minigames, and when you do 3-star any minigames, you just forget it and move on to the next. The stickers aren't really that much of an incentive to collect aside from completion's sake, which in any of Remix 1, I've gotten to a point where I can't get a good amount of points to want to get the stickers, because I have beaten every single game with 3 stars. Also, some of the minigames to 3 stars can be extremely frustrating and craptastical, whether because of the challenge required or the original game itself, like Pinball, with the worst one being the last bonus Mario game lasting over 40 parts! Keep in mind, most of the minigames contain 3 to 5 challenges, which when you failed, wasn't too bad when you had to restart it. But the final Mario game? What the fudge, Nintendo? Were you out of your mind when you made that? It still had mostly good minigame challenges, though if I had any suggestion I would give for this game is they should have had a randomizer that picks out a game for you to play, because after 3-starring everything, I didn't know what to play. And in addition to that, a challenge list that gives you a couple of randomly selected minigames to play. Kind of like in WarioWare. They could have easily just made this a WarioWare game. Speaking of which, unlike WarioWare, there's no multiplayer or party mode. Yeah, this is completely single player only. I don't know what Nintendo was thinking by not having multiplayer where you can challenge each other by either taking turns to play, which Nintendo suggests in NES Remix 2, or playing at the same time with one on the gamepad and the other on the big screen with a Wiimote, or maybe having two player challenges. All these ideas you think Nintendo would do in the second game, NES Remix 2. Well, they kind of did, but how is number two? It's pretty much the same game with some small tweaks and a different set of games, but with 12 instead of 16 games that didn't appear in the first NES Remix, like Metroid, Kirby, and the other Mario games. Not as much sports or obscure games. It also has more frustration from what I've played of it. 
Mostly with Warrior Woods, which I hate with every fiber of my being. I consider this game selection to be a terrible choice as the controls are just fudging confusing to get used to. Unlike other puzzle games that set the standards like, oh, I don't know, Tetris maybe? Ugh, licensing. Yeah, I don't like NES Remix 2 as much as the first, in the sense I screamed and yelled at it a lot more than the first one, but if you own both NES Remix games, you unlock Championship Mode, which is basically like the Nintendo World Championship game with online leaderboards to see who's the top Nintendo gamer. Then there's Super Luigi Bros, where you basically play as Luigi playing the levels flip turned around. Yeah, that's it. And this is sort of the only two-player game you'll get in NES Remix 2, which Nintendo just suggests taking turns playing. Which I find lazy that they didn't make any multiplayer mode within the game, but instead just ask the player to pass around the controller. I just find it kind of lazy because it's not like the game knows which player was playing, who was doing really good, and who was doing really bad at the game. It's not like there's a scoreboard at the end saying which player did the best within the game and such, you get what I mean? Before I end this, let's mention the controls. They're not that bad overall, I did wish they had an option to change the button layout because my Super Nintendo instincts of pressing Y to run and B to jump keeps kicking in especially since the buttons are laid on like a Super Nintendo controller and not an NES. On that note, some of the games don't feel right with this layout, like Punch-Out. Well, that's all the stuff that I can think of to talk about NES Remix 1 and 2, so is it worth it? Separately, each of them is $14.99, at this time anyways, and at first NES Remix 1 does seem worth it, but the more I beat the game of 3 stars, the less it started to feel like it's worth it. I mean, I don't really feel like coming back to the game after completing everything. I mean, I enjoyed NES Remix, and I do suggest checking it out, but with the lack of multiplayer and good replay value, it just makes me want to say no. Although, it does have a lot of content in it, and I did put in a bunch of hours into it. Hmm... If I'd say yes or no, I would probably lean towards saying yes. Worth it. Despite the potential features it could have had, the game still offers a lot to play with and you'll probably spend a good portion of time doing so. Now, if the game is on sale, I'd definitely recommend picking it up, but the original price isn't too bad. Oh, what about NES Remix 2? Well, if you bought the first game, you might as well get the second game, because you're either all in or you're all out. On that note... Nintendo has the Ultimate NES Remix, which combines both NES Remix 1 and 2 for the Wii U and 3DS. Although I'm a little hesitant to recommend, as from the number of games I saw included online, it seems better to just buy NES Remix 1 and 2 separately to get a total of 28 games, as opposed to just 16 games, albeit the better ones. Like for instance, No Wario Woods! Although the 3DS version is kind of tempting, it has this daily challenge mechanic which at least gives some sort of replay value, a Famicom Remix mode which seems intriguing to play Famicom games, a sped up version of Mario which seems lazier than Super Luigi Bros, but it still has no multiplayer in the end. You'd think they'd include that in somehow. What the fudge, Nintendo? Well, anyways, I hope you found this video helpful on the NES Remixes to see, is it worth it? This is Wizard 100 you're the viewers and I'm the reviewer, so stay tuned for more! Hey guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want more than you can see here, be sure to check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates on reviews and videos. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more video game content for you to watch. Such as the videos I'm showcasing right now. Be sure to give a like and comment for feedback and check out my site LazyWorks Creations and River City Gamers for more content like mine. Links to all that goodness is right in the description or click the annotations if you're watching on YouTube. But with the lack of multiplayer and good replay value, value,